I am so happy today because I have watched this designer for really just a handful of months and I have seen him do some incredible things. Um, welcome, Leopoldo, to the Flower Podcast. Hi, hi, Scott. Thank you so much for your nice invitation. Yeah, well, I it's so interesting because I don't know if it's just the web or, you know, sometimes you just think they're listening to us or something, but it's like when I found you and I started following you, it's like all of a sudden I started seeing you everywhere. I started seeing <laughs> you on Instagram and on Facebook and all these places and all these incredible things you were teaching. And I thought, wow, I, I am really excited that I'm going to have this interview lined up. With oh, it. thank you. Yeah, because it was just really great. So um, why don't you tell us briefly where you're located so that way people will know and then also we can start and dive into your story. How did you get into flowers? Yeah, sure. Um, well, I am located in Mexico City. I am from here. I, I born here in Mexico City. Um, I think that we will be moving uh, probably in this year to the United States. I don't know. My wife is from there. So oh, maybe. Wow, okay. Yeah, maybe it will happen during, during this year or the next in the, in the early 2022. We are still looking because all the situation of the pandemic, you know, change a little bit yeah. the, the plans. But well, by now we are still here in Mexico City. And how I start in the flora, in the flowers? Well, that's, that's a very strange story for me. I think that is not uh, at all the usual story of most of the you know, florists because um, you know when somebody wants to learn how to work with flowers is because they like it because they are searching for classes or something like that. <laughs> My story is uh, completely the opposite. I was uh, working when I was like 18 years old. I start a catering business with my with my mom and I work over there like around I think 10 years wow like that. and during those 10 years we have a big problems with the uh, with the uh, flower shops you know we we cannot find somebody that was really professional or that really feels all our needs in the business okay. Um, so we decided we have to learn how to do this. So uh, we take one of our employees and tell him, you know, we will pay for you the classes. You will go and you will learn and you will do it and you will earn some extra money. And of course, he wanted to do it. But because the time, because the schedule of the classes, he cannot take the classes. Oh, no. So after, after that, I, tell, I told, sorry, to my mom, Okay, mom, you always have uh, love the garden and the plants and, you know, flowers, all that. So go to the classes. And because the schedule of the classes, she couldn't make it. Oh, so no. The only one that was available <laughs> to go to the class, it was me. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, I start going to the classes and then I, I just find an ability that, I didn't know that that I have. So uh, when I was when I was a kid, I always wanted to study architecture. Okay. But when I when I get in, into college, I mean nowadays I I still I don't know why I don't choose architecture. I study business management. Um, Were you really good at math? Uh, I, no, I, I I don't think so. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but I, just, well. I know it's not engineering, but I always think of architecture yeah. as being a lot of math and being very creative, and it's kind of the best of both worlds a little bit. That's why I was curious. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. I mean, I mean, I I was just I I think that it was the friends, you know. I I'm, I mean, I, I wanted to study architecture, but you know, all all your group of friends wanted to go to other to other ways, so I just. I just changed. I, I, I still nowadays, I don't know why really, but well, I didn't study. But when I get into floristry, I just discover again that creative side that I put aside in my life for, for a while. And sure. that, is, that is what really trapped me, you know, in, in, into, into floristry to know that, I mean, on those days, we, we were still using a lot of... Um, 
form so that somebody give me a brick of floral foam and to discover that you know it has a very weird texture and not a very nice color but to change it into something beautiful that somebody can you know feel happiness or fall in love for somebody or whatever emotion that you can create that is what really trapped me and bring me to the into the floristry so that is the way that I that I started and um, well after that uh, I studied like two months in a little class that I that I discovered here in Mexico City and uh, well the, the teacher that I was that I was um, going to he, he told me I will I will do a flower show so in that moment of course I have no idea of what it was a flower show it was like what are you talking about and well he explained me that he will teach a class a demonstration for I don't know how many people um, and that he, he wants that I help him during the demonstration uh, so I think well I don't know, I, I was not still very into the flowers. And I told him, I, I, I only have two months doing this and you want to bring me to the stage and do something like this. And he was the first uh, person to tell me, yeah, it's, you're born to be a florist. So wow. that, that changes my whole life. In, in that moment, I, that idea doesn't get out of my head. So I start like studying a little bit more and more and more by myself because in that moment here in Mexico, we don't have, or we didn't have, sorry, uh, a lot of options to study floristry. Mm. Now, nowadays, yeah. of course, I think that as around the world, uh, fortunately the flower world, you know, have a, a, a boom like um, it, is growing a lot everywhere sure, so, sure. so that, that is that is very nice but in that moment like eight nine years ago it was not into that like makes here in mexico so i study a lot by myself and then i just start practicing and practicing and practicing and, and well that's that's the way that i that i start <laughs> well, and with your mom and you having a catering business, mm -hmm. you obviously had lots of opportunities to practice. And yeah, yeah. yeah. But you know what is the funny thing that we go to the classes to solve that problem, right? But then when I after after I go to the classes, um, this place where I studied, they hire me to to teach. <laughs> so it's like. Yeah, I study and then they want, they, they, they interview me and they told me, it's like, we, we want that you be a teacher here. So I start teaching and it starts consuming and consuming more time from me. And in some point, I couldn't be anymore in the catering business. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, your mom, so your mom still doesn't have a florist. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the, the problem was not solved at all. Right. <laughs> And, um, but, but well, she, she was happy, of course, that I find, of course. yeah, like a new path and a new passion for myself. And since that moment, I, I, I was still, I was, sorry, you know, like a hundred percent into the flowers, into the flower world. So since nine years ago, it haven't, it, it haven't stopped like teaching first here in Mexico and then little by little growing and some people knowing me by because of social media of course mm -hmm. uh, sure that is like a a, a very uh, wonderful tool for your work i think and um and then more and more opportunities start coming and fortunately i have been i have been doing this that is my passion since that since that moment so i am so very how lucky. many years how many years has it been since you in went that, to floral school? Um, nine years, I think. Okay. Nine so, years, yeah. Wow, you've done so much in nine years. That is amazing. Um, yeah, it, 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 and now that you know the story, I, I, I always say that it's like the Cinderella story of like- Sure. The flowers, because um, 
I mean, I, I just start sharing my work in Facebook in that moment. Instagram was not that strong as today. So I just started in my personal profile um, in, in Facebook. And then somebody saw my work. And I remember one day I received an email of a um, lady. Her name is Isabel G. Palmer, I think. And she, she told me that she was uh, creating a book that has the 25 uh, most important florists on the last 25 years all together in one book. And she wants to put in that book also like three new florists that she thinks that it could be there on the future. And of course I get lucky and she, she include me in the book. And because that reason, the AIFD organization gets to know me and then they invite me to be the international guest in the International Symposium in 2016. And since that moment, fortunately, the international journey haven't, haven't stopped for me until this pandemic time, of course. <laughs> but, <laughs> and, uh, it stopped for everybody, unfortunately. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. yes. But, but also, it's, um, I think that it, it's very interesting how we, all of us, are finding new ways to still doing what we love and what, you know, what we are passionate about it. So right. fortunately during all this time, I have been teaching a lot on, on, on this same way, like using Zoom, that it's a, an incredible tool also. Uh, yeah, I, I, I haven't stopped. I think that each month I have been sharing and teaching with different schools around the world. So I think that that's very cool also. Yeah, that is really cool. That's very, I think, incredible, because, actually. Because also it, it, it makes it cheaper, you know, for the students. Mm. Because, of course, they don't, have, they don't have to pay all the cost of, of the travel, of the teacher, of the, um, what is this word, the hotel, the meals, of course, I've, the food, right. the place, all, 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 the, all, the, um, all the costs that the organizers need to cover, of course, to, be po to make possible that one of us be with the students. So I think that that's also nice for the, for the students that they can, the ones that they were never able to go to the regular classes to finally have the chance to study with some of the florists that they are, admire. And because they don't have enough money, they, they couldn't make it before. So I think that that's, that's also something very cool. Right, because I know you're talking about also those expenses for somebody to bring you into town, but it's also expenses, you know, if, if I, you know, let's say you're in, I don't know, you're in Washington DC doing something and I'm not there, but I want to see you, I've got to travel there. And then, so that's even cheaper for your students because they don't have the expense of traveling on their side. And plus, I mean, how many students can you really teach, you know, one-on-one -on -one or hands-on, you know, maybe what? 30, 25, maybe? Yeah. That's a lot, yeah. actually. Yeah, I, I think that to keep it like really personal and to have like a good control of the class, I will think, yeah, like 30 will be like the, the maximum. Of course, some organizers love to, to put more inside because of course they need to make the business and to cover all right. the expenses that that make. Uh, so I understand that they need sometimes, I need to put like 50 students or I mean you know we do our best and of course we do it but I will say that the best will be like around I mean the best it will be 15 you know is I think that 15 students is is very nice so everybody can <clears throat> sorry so everybody can uh, can have a very personal you know like review and that you can comment and give some advice to each of them like very very nicely 30 in between 15 and 30 I think that it's a nice number well and then virtually of course you can have a hundred I mean you can have as many as your your mem your zoom membership will allow almost and yeah um and and then it's can be literally around the world so that's that's so cool well you know and the other thing I always find interesting is so many designers have their own technique their own style 
And, and even though designers that design, I won't even say similar to you, but that architectural, natural, sustainable style, you know, everyone has looks so different. And when I see yours, I feel the same. I mean, I've, it's so different, but yet it's so interesting. And it's like, a, uh, so many of the pieces are like works of art. And so when you started teaching, you know, how, at what point did you decide, okay, you're trying to break out of the box now? Because I'm sure you didn't like this piece I'm looking at behind you. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure those first couple months, you never saw a piece like that probably, right? Yeah, yeah, right. Of you know, it, was tra it was traditional floristry at that point. So at what point did your mind just explode and you, all of a sudden, okay, I can, I can make this so much more than it is right now, because I feel like so many times people are held back where they're not, they don't, they don't even think about that. They don't think that way. So I'm just really curious, how did you get to that point where you just I don't know, you just saw such a bigger picture. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, I mean, the, um, I think that that is the hardest part of being a florist, right? To find your own style and your own vision of floristry. Uh, but for me, um, I mean, as, as I was telling you, is I, I didn't want to be a florist first. Right. So I, 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 was, I was not sure to, to, you know, to put all my life in, into floristry. Um, and you know, even my family is like, how you will stop like your degree, you know, like your college degree being uh, business management uh, to be a florist. It doesn't make sense. You know, and maybe yes, you know, it doesn't make sense. But for me, it was what makes me happy. So that's why I decided. And um, when I decided to be a florist, it was when one of my teachers uh, took out a book of Mr. Gregor Lersch. Mm. Gregor, he, Gregor again, yeah. yeah. Yeah, of course. I mean, he's, yeah. he's the, the main one for a lot of us. Uh, so he showed me the book of Gregor and he told me, it's just that you need to understand that flowers is not only like these traditional arrangements or this classic floristry. Uh, with the flowers, you can do a lot of different things. So, I just start watching the book and I, I thought myself this, wow, I have, to, I have to learn how to create things like this. So I start reading like a lot of the Gregor's books, uh, all of them actually, I think. <laughs> I, have, I have read them all and I just start trying by myself a lot of things and, you know, as, as I told you, trying to study not only about floristry, I study about um, biology and st study about architecture and engineering and all, all these different science that when you discover that you put together different disciplines, different, different, um, yeah, different, different areas, I mean, you can get very, very interesting results in your work. So, it was just that, like not having any any fear, you know, to to fail. Because I have found in my journey that uh, a lot of people are very afraid to be creative, because of course, when you are creative, you are showing your own soul. You are telling to the rest of the people, "Hey, this is me. This is what I like. This is my personality." And these are my feelings. And that, that is very scary, right? That a lot of people is like, oh no, I don't want to open myself. I don't want to show to the rest of the world who I am. But as I always say to my, to my students, is you show it. You will be amazed of how many people will love you and how many people will like the way that you are. So it's just, it's just that, to break that um, how you will say it, like mental um, barrier, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, like, and and not be scared of showing yourself to to the rest. Yeah. You know that I I I so resonate with what you just said because I feel like there's so many people that it's kind of like following a recipe 
and I probably have said this before on the podcast, but you know, you feel like you have to, to follow every step, but sometimes the magic happens when you veer off and go down a different path or you're like, oh, I don't have this ingredient. So let me put this ingredient in and see what happens. And, and then all of a sudden you're like, wow, this is even better than I thought it was going to be. Um, and I see what you do and I feel like you really do pull in so many disciplines, um, you know, from this, from the idea of sustainability, from the ideas of your architecture, from, from your floral artistry. And, and I can see why, you know, so many people really connect with what you do. Um, I know that it's so hard though. I mean, I hear time and time again from different flower florists and flower shops and they see some of these designs, not yours particular, but just in general. And they're very inspired by them, but they think, how do I translate that into everyday retail? And I'm like, I don't know that you can necessarily, but then I think there's techniques that you can use. Um, do you ever hear that? Do, do people ever ask you that question? Of course, all the time, all the time, especially with the kind of work that, that I create, because I, I understand that, of course, it's not always fast. Sometimes, oh, right. can, of course, you can create amazing things on a fast way with the right technique, but sometimes it, you know, it requires a little bit of, of time. Uh, it's intricate and you, have, you, know, you have to put a, a, a lot of effort on, on some of the pieces. But um, what, I, what I say to the students is that also my vision of floristry is most of the flower shops are always you know, looking the side to, to sell only for a birthday, for an anniversary, for Valentine's Day, for Mother's Day. But I mean, for me, it's why we don't start looking into the flowers as something that is necessar necessary for the house that is necessary for a building, that is necessary for a museum, I, I don't know, any, any, any kind of place, and start thinking in floristry as part of, um, of home design, of, of um, interior design, right? Uh, to create pieces that the clients can understand that I am not only buying the flowers, I, I am buying a giant container, right? Oh, wow a giant container that is special for your house, is unique for your house, and you can put it you know, on anywhere that you want. I, I actually, I do this a lot, like creating you know, special, um, special pieces for the right place, like, like specially made for you, not, I, I didn't make it like randomly and then put it into your house. So it's like creating this specific, piece for something special and then put it on the right on the right place and it will be amazing because the people can also start buying flowers as they are doing right now in, in any grocery store right or in many many places I think that is happening each time more that around the world the regular people as I say the ones that are not florists okay. uh, they, they can get flowers anywhere and it's okay, but if they are getting flowers, why we don't offer them something that they can play with? That, that is not only to take it in their houses and put it just in the jar and, and that's it. Create something that is needed in the, in the places. So that is one way that you can, of course, take it. And the other one is, of course, you always can you know, like um, scale it down Sure. smaller versions of it or just take the idea you know like um before our interview you no know, i was sharing with you it's like this is made of oat so okay just the idea to have different textures in your containers in in your papers in your ribbons in whatever you are using to create your everyday designs just go for it try it because um, I, I can see this very clearly, especially in fashion. I can see that the people like 
specific brands, right? It's like, oh no, I like I like this or I like that because they have, um, I don't know, nice coats or nice fabrics, whatever. But I don't see that in flowers. You know, it's like, mm, yes, like you know, I I, I go to Lersh because. I love their structures or I go, I don't know, so many, many names to, to be named uh, a lot of good florists around the world, but I don't know. I, I go to Klaus Wagner because I love the way that he mix art with everyday designs. Oh, it's like, I, I don't hear that in forest trees. Most of the people just get flowers because up here is cheaper or in here the flowers uh, last longer. In, in my home. And that is the kind of things that the people um, think about when they decide where they will buy something. But very few people actually, I think that they choose a specific flower shop because the style, they love the style because probably they can find that style in many different places. But the price again, and the, the longevity of the flowers are their, their main ones. So I think that if we start showing the different techniques that are possible in floristry, uh, the people will understand that it's more than that. The, 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 the students very often t tell to, to us, you know, like, as, as you were asking, like, how I can use that in my flower shop? I mean, just use it in the display. Put it in the window, you know. Oh, excellent idea! Yeah. Put, put it in the window, and if the client let them, know, let them know it's possible. Yeah, of course. Let it know it, it, how you can sell it if you don't show it. Exactly. That is the first step. If if you don't show it, of course it would not sell it. So, show it to your customer, and then when the customer sees something very special, they will think, "Oh, I think that if they can do that." It's very possible that they can sell to me a dozen roses. Mm, it's right. like, or it they, won't look like somebody else down the street. It might yeah. look different, you yeah. know, whether it's a different flower, a slightly different design, yeah. whatever that is. But it's kind of like, wow, I want the person who created that to do my flowers because, I mean, other yeah. people, it's like, I don't know, it becomes like a trend almost. Yeah, and, and because it's a special or whatever. And, and that is a way that, that trends become trends, right? Like, because somebody show yeah. it, because somebody show it and then uh, the people accept it and it became a trend. So that is the same for this kind of, of work, I think, is we only have to show it and then somebody will like it and they, then they will start getting it more and more and more. And it, it's a process, I think it's, it's a, a little sure. process. But also very important, I think that this kind of work also showed to the florists that they can use, you know, new techniques to um, to create their arrangements, specifically in mechanics. That is what is more important, I think, for the for the flower shops, the mechanics of this kind of work that they can apply to their everyday work. So I think that that is the clue of, of this. I do too. And I think one thing I think about is back uh, in my wholesale days, I had several customers that did most, mostly, I mean, almost exclusively either corporate work or hotel work or uh, movie set kind of work where they, you know, or they were sought out because they create, they had different things. And I like, so those of you listening on the podcast, you have to go over to YouTube so you can see the video and the piece that's behind yeah, man, because it's, it's, it's so incredible. I mean, imagine a hotel, a hotel lobby and you have this incredible work of art. I mean, that's going to like, people are going to really get, I don't know, it's like they're going to be awestruck or they're going to be as memorable, which is what you want. If you are, you know, a big corporate office that maybe you want when people walk in, you see this living sculpture, uh, you see this, you know, piece of art, literally. But the other thing is, is a lot of the structure, the time, you know, because I know you said time consuming. Some of people say it's too time consuming. But when I see a structure like that, I also feel like a lot of times you could reuse it. Like you could store it, pull it out in four months and use it in a different place or three or whatever. I mean, use it, you could use it in your store window. You could use it at a hotel, but you could also use it in your store window or you could use it at a, 
a home party or something like that. Something, you know, and get more mileage out of it and not just say, oh, I don't have time for that, but realize you're creating a prop or you're creating um, a vessel, uh, you know, just so to speak. And I think there's so many opportunities for stuff like this. And, and I think, and, and I realize, depending on where you're located may depend, you know, maybe you don't have a Four Seasons Hotel uh, around the corner, but, um, but I'm sure you have some kind of business or a uh, doctor's office where you could scale something down and still create something. So I appreciate you saying that because I feel like there's so much potential in this kind of art that people yeah. just dismiss just so easily. And um, I don't know, I find that really encouraging. Thank you. No, 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 definitely, definitely. You, you are right. I mean, you, you put all your effort one time and you get it back a lot of times. So that is a smart way to make business, right? Is uh, instead of having to create, I don't know, a hundred of arrangements to get the same kind of profit, you only work one time. And then of course you have to put several times flowers in it. But the wonderful part of this kind of work is that um, after you create the right mechanic, the flowers are so easy to place because you have the right mechanic. So it's very easy to place them. You don't struggle at all. And of course, when you have the right knowledge and, uh, and the right um, um, techniques, of course, it, it, it becomes, you can put the flowers like in 15, 20 minutes. So I think that that is, that is very affordable, right? For any flower sure. shop. Especially for that impact. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, I didn't realize this. I'm embarrassed to say this, but <laughs> um, I didn't realize that you were in the World Cup. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because when it was on, I was still working in wholesale. And so I literally had, I was streaming it on my phone, on my desk while I'm packing orders and working with customers and doing all that. So I didn't even really get to see that much of it, but it was kind of funny. And I'm like, so I'd love to hear um, your experience with that. Tell me about what you thought about that. And sure. Did you learn anything from that experience? Well, of course, of course. I mean, um, I mean, you know now my my story, how, how I start in, in Florida Street. Amazing. So it was like very, very fast and everything happens kind of easy, I have to say for me. So I am, I am very lucky. I'm very grateful about well, that. You're gifted. You're gifted. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I, I don't know about that, but I love, I love what I do. So I have fun with that. Um, so I, I start doing this in, 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 a biggest, in a bigger way, you know, like going in different international travels and start going to the United States, to Europe, to Asia, start teaching. And one day also I get an invitation to represent my country, uh, Mexico, in the America's Cup. In the, in the, not in the one of the United States, like the one of the continent. Right. So, um, I mean, of course I say yes, because <laughs> of I, course. I, I, for me, I think that it's, it's not a biggest yeah. honor, right? To that represent in whatever you, do in, in the life your your own country and uh, of course i accept but um as you know i mean my, my country mexico of course we have a lot of troubles a lot of issues in different in different uh, ways like economics and social and a lot of a lot of different issues so um, uh, a lot of people probably didn't believe you know in the, in the first mm. moment when i when i accepted like what it will happen it's like oh no Me mexico will not win and until that day mexico have never win or have never won the, the competition before so i think myself is like why not it's like let's let's do it and and try to do my best and for me it was that what gets me into competition not not to go as leopoldo gomez to go as as mexico you know to represent something bigger than me and to try to show to the world on the way that florists in my country can, can think about flowers. So I go to, to the America's Cup and I, I get lucky. I 
I, I, I was able to, to won the competition. And that gave me the ticket to represent Mexico in the World Cup for the very first time. Mexico have, have never been before in the, in the World Cup. So of course that was a huge honor for me. And it was actually my second competition in my life. <laughs> the first one was the America's Cup. Wow, <laughs> and, then, that's and, then, and then the next one was the World Cup. Um, and until that moment, and until the America's Cup, um, my, my story was only about winning, only about winning and winning and going well, all the things. Sure. So when I get into, into the World Cup, uh, and it was, a, I think that it was a special World Cup because it was a lot of huge names, a lot of people that have been doing this for a long time that I admire myself when I, when I start studying, like Natalia Sisko, of course, that now is a very good friend, last as Bart Hassam, of course, that I told Bart when I met him, he's like, you know, man, he's like, I, when I was starting, maybe you don't remember this, but I sent you a message by Facebook um, showing you a photo of my work. And if you can, you know, give me some advice, some, some, uh, <laughs> really? Uh, yeah, really. Some, um, you know, some, some, something that I can improve in my work. And I mean, I'm sure that I, you don't remember this, but I mean, that is for me, it's like, I, I really was able to, to be side by side by now, like in the same level, you know, as, as my floral heroes in that moment, That's of course. So cool. and, and nowadays I still learn a lot from them just by watching their work. And of course, Bart didn't remember and he didn't answer. Still, <laughs> <laughs> I told him, I, I'm still resentful with you. <laughs> uh, no, no, I mean, He's a very nice guy, Bart. He's a very, very nice guy. And um, so on, until that point, it was only about winning. And I learned a lot from the World Cup because, because I, didn't, I didn't win. I didn't win the competition. I learned a lot that, that you have to work harder, that you have to, to push yourself to give your 100%, that not all the time, just the talent is enough. That you have to put a little bit more to you know to be to be on the on the top of the of the list so um, of course uh, nobody likes to lose that's that's normal of course sure but um after after you know a couple of days after some a week or something like that i just realized that to lose the competition it was the best thing that i have that i it could happen to me because uh, since that moment I start trying to improve my skills, trying to learn new things, trying to push myself farther and farther in the kind of work that I that I did, and it, I mean it was it was like like that. I since since Philadelphia I start I think improving my work. I, I can I can see it little by little, and and I'm sure that. I can still improve a lot more. So let's just go for it and, and try to be better. And, and as a teacher, I think that you have to teach since the example. I mean, if you want that your students are, can, can be better, you have, you have to ask the same for yourself. You have to be improving mm -hmm. each day yourself and showing them all. Because a lot of the times, so as a teachers, we always say to the students, oh, you know, be creative and try new things and do this and do that. But ourselves, we don't do it. It's like we are, of course, comfortable with some techniques that we handle very good, that we uh, already know. And we share that, we teach that. But why not? It's like if I am asking for you to be creative, I have to be creative as well to show you that it is possible that you have to feel comfortable with that. So, yes, yeah, I really like that. I appreciate that so much because I, I feel like so many times people feel like they've gotten to a level and what a great example to show your students that you're continuing to learn. Yeah, um, it's a process. Yeah. And I, and I think so many times 
Um, those are the teachers, those are the educators that people tend to just gravitate towards, I think, because there's always something fresh. There's always something new. Um, you're also demonstrating your creative process as you, as you develop a skill or a technique. And I think that's, that's really amazing. And I, I think it speaks to your passion, as you've said several times already for the industry and, and that you do enjoy it. And, um, and I don't know, I, I, it's funny because I'm always, I'm kind of that same way when it comes to flowers. Like I'm always trying to find a new flower, always. And it's not because I'm discontent with what we have, but I feel like as I've traveled to different continents, I'm like, there's so many flowers out there that I'm like, oh my gosh, that would make a great cut flower. But no one's ever thought of it probably for that purpose because it was either in a nursery or in a garden. And, and they think of it in that sense. They don't think outside the box with it. And that's one of the things I appreciate about you is that you do obviously think outside the box. I, I feel like um, I, I wanted to ask, because I think almost every piece I've seen would kind of fall in that category of sustainable um, that you know you're using um, easily oh like even like this piece behind you you said it, it was like plywood or wood that yeah. you covered in oatmeal and, and you created this cool texture and color palette and the colors up against that neutral oatmeal really pop I mean they really kind of show off and and I'm just curious um, to you, what does sustainability mean to you as far as your design work? Yeah, uh, that, that is actually um, a very interesting word, right? Because I think that most of all have our own thought about what is sust sustainability. <laughs> I, sure. I cannot uh, say that word, sorry. It's, it's okay. Kind of hard. <laughs> Sometimes I have to think about it too. So okay. <laughs> no, I mean, I know. Um, but um, I mean, for me, um, what it means is that a business, a business that can support themselves to be all the time taking the hundred percent of the sources that they have around, that is what for me means sustain. <laughs> can you say it again? Sustainable. sustainable. <laughs> Sustainable, sustainable, uh -huh. sustainable, sustainable. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> sustainable. For me, that is what it means like to have a sustainable business, to be able to, um, I repeat, to use the hundred percent of the sources that you have around you. Like if I have, I don't know, you know, like a fern, like I don't have it here right now, but if I have fern that is getting old, don't, don't trash it. It's like, take out the leaves and there is a stem that is very strong and that you can use as an armature to create kind of a grease and put it in your glass container and they will hold the flowers. So when you, when you learn, right? And, and I think that in, in this, I also see it since my business side, like if, if you understand that nothing is trash in your in your business that you can use it and apply it for so many different things and when your bag of trash starts instead of going of this size of this size sorry starts going like this i think that that is when you start creating business and um, for me that is what a sustainable business it will be and of course, there is the other side that I think that it's like the side that a lot of people are trying to give that it, it will be like the eco-friendly side that it's sure. eco-friendly. Eco so that is, of course, that is different when you, uh, when you are able to create something that you can reuse or that you don't have to trash it just since the first time that you enjoy the flowers and then trash it, of course, if you use it one, two, three, four, ten, one hundred times, that is very eco-friendly. And there are so many different ways. I mean, a lot of people use the chicken wire or 
different kind of techniques. And I think that that is cool. I mean, of course, to help their environment is always is always good. I mean, that, that sure. are good news, I think. And I think that fortunately also the big companies that um, that are creating the, the foam that we used in, 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 in the past and nowadays we, we still we still use it. And I, I, I really don't have nothing against like the florists that like the foam and, or for the ones that doesn't like the foam. I am very open in floristry because I, am, I get that there are different needs and different um, techniques on this. Um, but fortunately those companies understand that the mentality of the new florists, the younger florists are changing and then they want to be friendly with their environment. So um, I think that they will create like more compostable materials and things like that in the future. Mm -hmm. That is great, I think. Sure, no, I, I like that and I can appreciate that. I, um, I know I saw on Facebook um, the design you did with the fern and I saw, and it was so funny because it was so quick. And I and I saw you, it looked like sword fern or a, a very narrow type of fern. And mm -hmm. you were just stripping the leaves off. And I thought to myself, why is he taking the leaves off? <laughs> and so I'm glad to hear that maybe they were past their peak. But, um, but then what you created with those little stems, it was amazing. It was an amazing armature. And I just thought to myself, wow. I mean, again, there's so many things that we just discard and we don't put those glasses on that allow us to see, oh, you know what? It doesn't take any space to store those stems. So you can just strip them and store them. And sure, you may throw the foliage away, but you have the stems. I mean, it's almost the size of a piece of, you know, thick gauge wire. And, um, but then you can use it to create something natural and, and really cool. And so I, I really found that really fascinating. Um, oh, thank you. Oh, sure. I, I feel like a lot of times too, um, and I wanted to kind of get into this a little bit, um, the idea of color and especially the styles that you do that are so natural, you know, you have so many you know, we, and so I, I may not refer to it correctly, so don't be offended. No, but like, no. like strict, you know, like sticks and different stems and branches that you are recycling, or I've seen you, you know, use your drill and create um, holes and things and twist wire and all kind of fun stuff. And I, and I think, okay, so when you go to put flowers into that, do you have to be careful of what you do palette wise as far as the flower colors go or do you try to just be all over the place? I mean, I'm, I don't really know how to ask the question I, I want to ask, but how do you get the most impact maybe using color? Um, I mean, that's the best way to start. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean only be, before I, I answer this to, for, for you, I just remember also something that you asked me before about like, you know, how how I get in, 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 in my mind to create these kind of things. And sure. I, I, I forgot a little bit to, to tell you something that I also love to share with my students. Like, because a lot of people ask me that, it's like, how you discover that you like that? Or how you discover that you, uh, that that is your style. And as I already told you, when I saw that Gregor's book, I, I love floristry and I tell to myself, I have to learn how to do that. But then uh, when I started, of course, you know, you start a little bit trying to copy the style of somebody that is very usual, that is very normal. And then one day I just realized that, I mean, if, if I don't stop trying to be Gregor Lersch, I will not go anywhere because <laughs> of oh. course Gregor, Gregor Lersch is only one. So I, I, cannot, I cannot repeat him, right? So nowadays- I'm, glad, I'm, I'm gonna interrupt. I'm glad you said that. Because so many times people don't give them themselves the permission to be themselves or they, you know, they feel like they have to do that or then they're not at that level. So anyway, I'm sorry to interrupt. So. No, 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 not at all. And uh, nowadays when I, you know, when, when I think in a design or when I think on, on, um, on, on an idea, it's like, of course, Gregor is still a huge, a huge inspiration for me. Uh, but nowadays I think he's like, oh, okay, I have this and I have that. It's like, what will Gregor never do? 
and yeah. that is a and, and that is the first step to be like very far away from him and to not be you know to not be compared with something that somebody else can that inspired me so much you know that it can be a, a comparison and and that is a way that I start doing that kind of that kind of things is like what will Gregor not do for this okay I, he will not do this and he will not what do was this. the answer what was the answer to that <laughs> I, I, I mean, I am, when I when I see Gre <laughs> when I see Gregor's Gregor's Gregor is um, um, very strong in, in in her in his design. So he's um, very strong, very very manly, right? Very masculine. I think that is the, the right word. Like with lines and strong uh, flowers, and um, his colors are usually a little bit more um, dark colors and neutral, that kind of thing. So. I think myself, okay, I will try to be soft and I will try to be more transparent and I will try to be more colorful. So it, 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 that, is, that, that is the way that I start doing what I, what I do. Um, but of course, getting back to your answer about the colors, that is something that also, it's a big passion for me. Why? Because the answer is, I think that it will be because I am Mexican <laughs> in my country. I, I think that we love colors. Uh, we are a very colorful um, country. I, I, I don't know if you have ever had the chance to travel to Mexico City, but when you land in Mexico City, uh, you land in between the city, of course. The, the airport is right in the middle of the city. So you start looking all the buildings around and you will find that in here all the houses are orange and yellow and turquoise and hot pink and any any kind of crazy colors um, because it's part of our culture of our culture since the Aztecs or the Mayans um, and that is my very very first inspiration for for the use of the color. And then, uh, of course, I, I also understand that when I start using the color as a main part of my work, if I only keep it as um, cultural size, it will happen maybe a little bit of what happens with the craft of my, of my country. That is, you know, it's, it's only craft. They, they only take it like craft, not as art. Mm. So I, I, I try to take that inspiration of my culture in Mexico, like very, very colorful using these colors, orange, pink, hot pink, turquoise, uh, yellows, all, that, all those colors, but taking them and trying to use the science that already exists using the theory of the golden mean Fibonacci sequence. Mm -hmm and start using the color in proportion, that it was something that I have never heard before from, from a teacher. I just create an own theory about that. Uh, it works for me. And I think that the people is also something that also really like about my work, like the colors. And I just start using that theory with my culture and mix it and that is the way that I discover for myself that I can use or I can mix any color in my work always that I use the Fibonacci sequence on it so for me it's not all most of the time it's not about which color harmony it is if it's monochromatic or if it's analog or if it's uh, polychromatic or whatever, any um, color harmony that it already exists on the theory. For me, it's about how much quantity I will use of this and how much quantity I will use of that. And in that way, I can use fluorescent colors with metallic colors, with dark colors, with pastel colors, and it works. I mean, for some for some reason, right? That somebody else already studied for us, like Fibonacci or Da Vinci, all the, all, sure. all those artists. I only try to apply it into floristry, 
and I, you can get really, really nice uh, results, really nice um, color harmonies in, in your work using this kind of, of theory. I'm, I'm really glad you said that because I, I often wondered and I didn't really think about it till you started going down this path. And then you said it like right after I thought it about the cultural impact of how color is just around you everywhere you go in Mexico City and then how that translates to your work because I can see where a lot of other areas of the world or cultures maybe are more um, not as embracive of color. You know, I think about, there's like a lot of people I follow from Japan that you, know, you see a lot of pastels and you see, I mean, yeah, you'll see some good color, but you just, it's very soft. It's very feminine. It's very, um, but yet it doesn't embrace the boldness of certain color palettes. So if it's yellow, it's a soft yellow as opposed to a bold yellow, um, whatever. And so I, I just think that that's really interesting. And I'm really glad because I feel like that's one of the things that helps set you apart. And that's one of the things that people sometimes don't think to embrace and it's okay you know embrace yeah, your course. culture embrace what you're you know um of course. maybe that's a color story you can tell that nobody else can tell just because you know that's that's your you know that's your background that's what you're used to so um, yeah i love that i love that oh com completely when you, you know when you see um the work around the world it's like very Clearly, of course, for the ones that are like really into the floristry, you know, like, like I say, like nerdies of floristry that we <laughs> that we that we love, you know, to study and oh, what what in what Germany is doing and what uh, France is doing and these kind of things. Sure. And, uh, sometimes it's you know it's very obvious when a florist is, as you say, from Europe, from Asia. From the United States, it's, it's like very obvious uh, because they have a style. The, the style is there, but I mean, as, as you know, it's, it's not a secret that unfortunately there are not a lot of not only Mexican, Latin American florists around the world, like on that you know on that top, right, like on the top level. of the list. Uh, we don't have a lot of of, of the of those unfortunately uh, so when i start doing this also something that inspires me to to start doing this kind of uh, use of the color is i have to show from where i am i have to show what i am and i i i, I, I need to show also i i need to share to the people what is my culture? And yes. because you know it's a very um, old culture, like the Aztecs and the Mayans have. We have tons of culture in my country, and I think that is something that we have to be proud of it. Absolutely. And um, of course, I try. I try to share it, but always trying, you know, like to not be. What it will be like the right word? Like I don't know if it's nice or not to say this, but. To, to not be cheesy on the on the use of it, mm. to, to try to try to put the culture, but on a on a contemporary way and on an elegant way, also on a modern way for me, because that is like the kind of things that I like, and you know, not because to to create something that is Mexican, I don't need to use the mariachi hat. You know? <laughs> because sometimes that happens you know oh, wow. i'm sure, I'm sure I, didn't, that. I didn't see that coming yeah I, um, I but i understand your point yeah i mean okay. and it's nothing wrong about that i mean mariachi is for my country and that is cool and, and and i like it also but to create something that represents a culture you don't need to be that obvious all the time yes thank you you, yes. you, you, you can hide it and you can show a different side, a different point of view to the rest of the world, and that they can say it's like, wow, they they, they have cool things over there. I, I I want to go and I want to to learn from from that. And I mean, for me, it's pretty amazing that Europeans and Asians, Asians, yeah, Asians um, students or florists are interested to learn from me from because I mean, in that side of the world is where everything happens right usually like europe and in asia 
So I think that is pretty cool that they are starting getting interested in, in somebody that is not from that side of the world and that they can uh, open their eyes uh, farther than Europe and Asia and start looking to America, not only to Mexico, to Brazil, to the United States, to the rest of the world, um, because you, you can learn from anywhere, from any, anyone, I think. Well, I think that that speaks to your style and it speaks to the way you approach things that, you know, people, you're, you're offering something different, I guess. And that's why they want, you know, that's why they're there. And so they can do that or, or learn from you. Um, I always like to ask at the end, and I know that I also want to talk about what you're doing right now. So, but I want to go ahead and ask if there's one piece of advice that you would give your students, or, or maybe it's a piece of advice that means a lot to you that some mentor gave you, what would that be or what is that? Uh, I think that it will be always, always try, right? I, I, I heard this phrase uh, one time and I, I adopted for me, like um, falling forward, right? Mm. It's like never, uh, if I will fall, I, will, I don't want to fall back. I always will try to fall forward, trying things, trying new techniques, trying uh, new approaches for the business. Always trying, 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 because when you stop trying, when you stop um, trusting in yourself, I think that that's when you when you are done, right? So I will, I will, I will say to the to the students and to the people that are hearing us, um, always try. Never, never be afraid or never be scared to try things and to show yourself. I really appreciate that because that is a lot more profound than somebody doesn't really pay attention to that. <laughs> um, that that was just really profound because is, you know what i'm saying i mean falling forward means you weren't settling for where you were at and that's that's very impactful if you really take the time to just kind of let that simmer on the back burner so to speak and just let that kind of yeah. you know cook and and so thank you um how can people uh learn more about you what you're doing your classes where can we connect with you well, um, I have a school here located in Mexico City. Of course, uh, because of the pandemic, we pretty much transformed the school in 100% virtual. So, mm -hmm. of course, those classes are in Spanish only, the, the classes that we offer at the school. Uh, Centro de Arte Floral is the name of the school. You can find it in, in Instagram and Facebook like that. And by myself, like my personal project, um, I am teaching right now like virtual classes, as we call it virtual masterclass. Okay. Um, and we are doing of those like three or four around the year. There are webinars that, uh, as you say before, we can, we can accept like more than a hundred students fortunately. And um, um, that it doesn't matter because it's more like a demonstration we, we teach life, the students can ask whatever they want during the class, they can, they can be really close of, of me, I try to be as close, as close of, uh, to them during, during the class as possible. Um, and then they get uh, separate videos of the same techniques and the same subjects that we taught during the life class so they can study as many times as they want. Um, so I always share that in my social um, media, especially my, um, my main media is, I think, Instagram. I think that that is the, the one that I, I am putting more effort by now. Um, I will start also my YouTube channel because I understand also that there is people that they cannot afford to pay anything uh, to learn a little bit. So I want to also share a little bit for free. Why not? So I will start doing that on, on YouTube. Um, so everybody can be able to 
to get closer to the floristry. Um, and um, well, the plan is that also when we finally get into the United States, <laughs> we, we, we have the plan also to start uh, uh, a very interesting uh, project over there, like, of course, uh, uh, a flower shop, but at the same time, a school over there. So I would not share a lot of details of that, but we, 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 are, doing, we are doing that uh, on the moment that we are able to get over there. So a lot of things, a lot of things coming in, in the future. So excited for that. Yeah, I am too. That's really awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on the Flower Podcast. It's been such a pleasure and I can't wait for this episode to be released and for people to learn more about you. No, no, thank you. Thank you for your invitation. And it was really my pleasure to share with you and to finally, to finally meet you, to talk with you front by front. That's right, that's right, that's right. <laughs> right? And I have a really good time. Thank you so much, Scott. <laughs>